We're taking a little summer vacay here, and I picked out this podcast out of the archives as one that I know that you're going to love. And when you're done listening, don't forget to rate and review us in your favorite podcast player. Thanks a lot, and enjoy the podcast. Oh my gosh, it was so funny. Now you have to picture this. We're in Santa Barbara, and every morning I hear out of the kitchen Barry saying, Hey Alexa, what's the weather? And so I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so annoying. So I made Alexa say a custom phrase. So the next time that Barry said, Hey Alexa, what's the weather? Alexa actually said, This is a modern house full of windows that overlooks the ocean. Look outside, dummy. Yes. And Barry was like, what happened? So you can do the same thing. It's really amazing. You can go to blueprints.amazon.com and then you can have your own Alexa do like your own Q&As. It's really quite fun. Hey, welcome to Tech Refresh. It's your weekly fun podcast about all things digital. And joining us this week is, of course, Ali Seligman, our amazing content queen at commando.com. Hello there, Ali. Hi, Kim. And we have a special guest. Oh, I'm super excited. He is so smart. So smart. Uh, Paul Culligan, he's the author of the number one top selling how to podcast, podcast strategy books, podcast consultant, podcast Paul. Yes. Hello, Paul. Hello, Kim. Hello, Ali. Thanks for having me on the show. And I have to tell you is that I sent out a request to say, you know, we need somebody to join us on Tech Refresh. And I sent that to a member of our staff who said, did Ben quit? (laughs) No. No, no, Ben didn't quit. Ben is camping. And so we're going to hear about Ben's camping escapades, I'm sure, on our next Tech Refresh. Because you don't know this, Paul, but Ben is actually a geek of the week. He has probably, oh, I don't know. 89 different gadgets that he takes camping with him. He needs to have like a U-Haul to bring all of his uh, batteries and and solar. And he actually took on his last camping trip to the Grand Canyon, a projector, monitor and screen so he wouldn't miss the Suns game. Good for him. (laughs) Well, he is. He's a great guy. Okay, just a reminder that I want you to rate, review, subscribe, follow this podcast because that'll help us get more folks informed about the whole tech world. And I have to tell you that Tech Refresh is brought to you by TheCurrentNewsletter.com. You get tech news, great tips that you can use right now, no ads, absolutely free. Sign up right now while you're thinking about it. Go to TheCurrentNewsletter.com, TheCurrentNewsletter.com. All right, let's get started with the news. Allie, you're up first. What's going on? Print Nightmare. It's a spooky name for a pretty bad Windows flaw. It's been in the news a lot and on this podcast a few times because Microsoft just hasn't been able to figure out how to fix it. I won't go too deep into the weeds on how it really works, but it's bad. Basically, the function that allows you to install a printer driver on your computer can be used by somebody to gain entire system access. So they can download malware, they can create new accounts, they can change or delete your data. It's it's bad. But the real bad part is now ransomware is in the mix. CrowdStrike, they are a security company. They said that they've been blocking instances of ransomware where criminals are using Print Nightmare to break into a machine. So bad thing got even worse. Uh, It's kind of like, picture leaving a window open and hoping, I really hope a burglar doesn't come in. It's kind of like that before your computer. The good news is Microsoft finally patched this and the patch finally works. Yes, they had one that didn't. (laughs) That was crazy to me that Microsoft, I mean, like this billion trillion dollar a year company that they have this print nightmare and they can't send out a fix that will fix it (laughs) It or that somebody wasn't there to check the fix to see if the fix actually fixed it that's the way (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) you're right i i always end up saying microsoft had a bad week they've they've had a lot of bad weeks lately but the the latest patch finally works so if you haven't updated your windows computer in a little while go do it right now it's important um, if you're an Apple person, like the two of you are, you've been rolling your eyes like, yeah, we know, Windows, lame. Uh, some more news on the iPhone 13 was just leaked. There's actually some pretty cool stuff. So the new one is going to go up to one terabyte of storage space. I remember when I went from like the eight gigabyte up to 16 and was like, wow, so much space. Okay, but this is the old Apple marketing thing. All right, you know, you go in there and like, I got 256 gigs, you got 512 And then you're like one terabyte, right? And so if you look on your phone under how much storage that you actually use, it's probably not a terabyte, but you're just sitting there and it's like, well, it's only $20 more. Right. It's only $50 more. (laughs) I mean, I might as well just get, I mean, you know, the terabyte, right? 
Well, and especially with everybody uploading to iCloud anyway, you don't really need it. If you want it, sure, have that, have fun. Uh, the other thing that actually looks really cool is portrait mode for video. We all like portrait mode. It's, you know, kind of artistically blurs the background, really crispy photos. The colors are beautiful. So having video that can do that actually seems pretty cool to me. Yeah, that would be really nice. You know, um, my nephew told me a joke the other day. It just reminded me of this because you, you're talking about Windows and Apple and that you should never fart in an Apple store. Why? Because they don't have Windows. Uh, Get it? Uh, <laughs> oh, womp, womp. Sorry about that. All right, Paul, you're up next. So I, I'm one of those guys who hasn't paid for cable TV in over a decade. That's just kind of who I am. And so I've been tracking the industry. I'm also one of those very stereotypical nerd types who really doesn't care too much about sports. And one of the reasons why I buy my TV online is I've never been forced to pay for sports, which is one of the reasons why everything's right. cable bill is so high. And it's, it's been interesting because, you know, Disney owns Disney Plus, which is a runaway hit. And we've been that from day one. Mandalorian, you know, there are no other Star Wars <laughs> movies as far as I'm concerned. Mandalorian is it. But what, what's been beautiful is, you know, I, I buy my Disney Plus and I buy my Hulu Plus without the commercials. And I don't pay for ESPN because I don't want to. And because I don't listen to it or I don't watch it or that type of thing. Well, you know, Hollywood being Hollywood and specifically the Hollywood Reporter has been reporting that they really think Disney should push it all into one big thing. Hulu plus Disney plus ESPN to be the big oh. Netflix killer. And this is where they're going and this is what they're pushing. And there's a lot of talk about it right now. And um, I'm just not a big fan of it. And I think the future and we're seeing this. Yes, we're getting a terabyte in our iPhone and we're doing all these things. But but the, the future of all this is choice. The future of all this is selection. And one of the reasons why many of us grabbed Disney so quickly, other than The Mandalorian, of course, was the fact that it was cheap and fast. And um, once we start bundling it up, once it starts going over that $10 range, once we start getting a place where T-Mobile stops giving it to us for free, you know, we start asking questions. So, you know, I recommend anyone who's looking at cutting the cord and not doing cable, find out what you want and buy just that. We could do that now. And the more of us who buy just that as opposed to buying the bundling, you know, the, the, the market always wins. So, um, no, Hollywood Reporter, I don't think this is a good idea. Well, it's kind of going back to the old cable days, though, right? I mean, you had 150 channels and you didn't really watch HGTV or Lifetime or the Hallmark Christmas movies, unless you're in my household where we watch. I don't. Barry watches Hallmark Christmas movies all year round. I oh my gosh. don't understand it. He says he's, you know, he says that it's yeah. research. Yes, it's research. <laughs> and I'm like, for what? I, uh, he, you know what? He's Father Christmas. He really is. Ah, I mean, like, you go. know, he produces the Mannheim Steamroller Christmas shows. Right. And so he's like, I'm, I'm going to have write a Christmas movie someday. But anyway, so, yes. Yeah, so but it seems like it's going back into the yeah. whole cable. Yeah. All that. And that. We're getting all these channels yeah, that we don't want. Exactly. And not necessary. There's that whole FOMO of, well, but I can get all the channels for only $10 more. And you convince yourself to do it because it's cheap. And then, like you said, Kim, you just have all this stuff you don't even use anyway. See, I think what you do, Allie, in your household is super Ooh. smart. That that you subscribe to like only one streaming service a month, right? Yeah, we, we try to stick to one at a time. Mostly, we're not huge TV people. And so if we're watching a series, it's probably the only thing we're watching. So once we're done with it, we get rid of it. And then we sign up for the next one if we want to watch something. Right now, we do have an extra one because I wanted to watch a show on HBO. So we've got a couple. But yeah, it, it does help. Then you don't end up, you know, looking at your bills for the month and, oh, look, I have five streaming services and I'm not watching any TV right now. Just feels bad. You know, what are you watching? I'm watching Outer Banks. I just watched The White Lotus on HBO, which was weird and cool and really interesting. I liked it a lot. It's a mini series about um, Hawaii, actually, Kim. It's a hotel in Hawaii and kind of the misadventures. It's so funny because the start of White Lotus, I know we're totally on a tangent, but I'll come back. The start <laughs> of White Lotus was on the TV in the kitchen. And I'm looking, I'm going, dang, I know where that is. It was, it's the beach in Waialea where the Four Seasons is. And they have the Wailea condos right next to it. And I'm like, I've been on that beach. I have like, <laughs> I've, I've had a cocktail on that beach. I've gone surfing on that beach. Amazing You should stuff. watch it. It's good and it's weird. Paul, you watching anything good? Oh, Walking Dead. Uh, season 10 finally came on Netflix. So, you know, got to get my zombies. <laughs> there Ten you go. seasons. Wow. Okay. I'm not going to talk about whether or not you should get a vaccine. 
but I've gotten questions from people like this. Uh, this one's from Sandy in Los Angeles. Hey, Kim, I need a vaccination card here in L.A. County to get into some restaurants. Do you know where I could buy a really good fake one online? Hey, thank you, Sandy. Uh, if you're considering buying a counterfeit coronavirus vaccination card, Here's the deal. Thousands of them are available online, They but they were seized. They were wrapped up in bundles. They were printed with the official CDC logo, and they've been seized by the U.S. Customs and Border Protection as they pass through Memphis. Now, it appears most of these were being purchased on eBay and shipped directly from China. Now, you have to know this, that making or buying these counterfeit cards violates all these federal laws. But the bottom line here is the question, like, how does this affect you? Could a private citizen be arrested using a fake vaccination card that was purchased online? So, Sandy, could you get arrested? Now, legal experts say yes. So any unauthorized use of any government emblem is all a federal crime. So you want to say no to the fake vaccination cards that you're going to see for sale online, Uh, especially if you see them pitched on Instagram by an influenza Get it? Because <laughs> uh, it's going to go viral. Oh. Oh. All right. I got another story, and this one really caught my attention. Maybe because I have a Gen Zer, right? My son Ian grew up with a smartphone. His first one was three. I mean, it was different because, of course, his mother was, you know, the digital goddess. Uh, but, you know, he lived on his phone. He lives on his phone. He does everything on his phone. And it's very rare to me that he actually makes a phone call. So that's why I thought this was interesting, that Gen Zers are now using their phone to make phone calls. This is a new trend. Can you believe this? Uh, They say that they have a new love language and they are totally over texting. Uh, Kira Russell is a 22-year-old student from New Jersey. Here's her actual quote. I would much rather tell somebody like, oh, my God, I got a new job. That or that I did something cool. I mean, seeing their reaction to what I'm actually talking about, it just feels personal. Yes. They're finally with the times. It's incredible. Okay. Or uh, it's not just young women. Here's a guy, Mitchell Gonzalez, 24 years old from Boston. He usually asks his friends, as well as any potential romantic interests, over texting first if they're free to talk before calling them. He says... If they say yes, I get extra excited. (laughs) Phone calls feel extra special because now it feels like I'm actually writing a letter to someone. Is that the next step? Are the Gen Zers going to start writing writing letters to each other? Carrier pigeons? There's a lot of levels to that one, yeah. Pen and paper. Yeah, I'm not sure if I really understood the whole thing about writing a letter. But, you know, why would... Anybody in Gen Z make a bad astronaut? I mean, anybody? You want to think about this? Because in space, no one can hear you meme. Oh, <laughs> come on. Come on. Paul, oh, that, you could at least chuckle, like, chuckle, just chuckle, chuckle a little yes, bit. Exactly. Just come on, work with it. All right, stay right where you are, because coming up next, we're going to Paul's podcasting podium. Yes, AP3. Paul's going to give us all these great tips about how you can be the best podcaster ever And then also, we have a brand new game that I'd like to share with you. And it's here on Tech Refresh. Uh, It's going to be called, I came up with this this morning, driving into the studios. You choose the fake news. So stay right where you are. Let me tell you about a revolutionary new mobile voicemail app. If you've got a business, your voicemail is probably filled with messages from customers. Often the messages don't contain all the details you need. But what if you were able to get visual information from your callers? That's something you can't do with a traditional audio voicemail box, but you can with Fillmore Productions Video Voicemail. With Fillmore Productions Video Voicemail, callers receive a link to download the mobile app. There they can view important details about your business, watch videos about what you have to offer, and then leave you a video message. Actors and musicians can showcase what they do, and callers to medical practices or repair shops can report their issues visually. There are so many things that video voicemail can do for a business that makes audio voicemail a thing of the past. Discover what video voicemail can do for your business. Visit GetVideoVoicemail.com. That's GetVideoVoicemail.com. That's GetVideoVoicemail.com. 
Okay, this is the part of Tech Refresh where we like to pass along some insider tips, some insider secrets. And normally it's like Allie talking about really exciting things like command prompts, right, Al? Hey, hey command prompts, exciting. love them. Okay. Ooh, yes, or terminal on your Mac. <laughs> See? It's like, oh, let's really bring them in with this one. All right, so Paul, you are a <laughs> podcasting maven. You are a podcasting expert. I would dare to say that you are the podcasting god, and we're so privileged to have you here with us. Wow, thank you. <laughs> Can I get tape of this for mom? <laughs> that should be on your ringer. So whenever yeah. somebody calls, it's it's for Paul, the podcasting god. I'll take it. So, what are some basic mistakes that people make when they think that they are going to be able to make a podcast and go to the top of the charts? Well, one of the things that happens a lot, and you can go to the top of podcasting and see people who've attempted this and maybe fixed it. One of the things people think is that they are their audience, and that is very seldom the case. Um, take this show. You know, you know Kim considerably more than your audience does. And as a result, you're taking what you have and giving it to your audience. That's what makes a great show. What happens is when you think and when you create only the show that you're going to want to listen to, there, there, there's no growth. There's no exploration. There's nothing there. We ask four questions. And these four questions help guide people as they produce their podcast. And it's everything from the big mega blockbuster to someone just doing something as an enthusiast at home. Question number one is, what do you want the podcast to do? Nice, plain, and simple. What do you want the podcast to do? For some business, it might be, I want to make the phone ring. Right, yeah. For others, you know, you know, I might want to make it possible for people who don't have these printer windows exploit nightmares taking over their system <laughs> and causing them billions of dollars of ransomware. You know, what do you want the podcast to do? The, the second question is how you know if the podcast is going to do it. I had a client who said, I want to make the podcast. I want the podcast to make the phone ring. Great. When the phone rings, are you going to ask why they're calling? Or are you just going to take the call? Oh, I'm going to take the call. I don't want to ask. I don't want to you know, lose the sale. Well, how are you going to know? We bought him a cell phone. Put the cell phone next to the landline. Every time <laughs> the landline rings, it's all of his other marketing. Every time the cell phone rings, it's his podcast. Now, now he oh, knows yeah, so how the podcast is working. You know? So number one, what do you want your podcast to do? Number two, how you know if it's doing it. Then number three, and this one's funny. A lot of people don't realize this. You ready for this, Kim? Really complicated. Is it doing it? Now, the cool <laughs> thing about that phone example is great because, I, you know, hey, how many times the phone ring? Man, the phone rang a lot more. By the way, we get his phone bill, so we know exactly how many times the phone rang. You know, but, <laughs> but you, know, what do I, you know, I want the podcast to have people sign up for my newsletter. Great. How many people signed up for the newsletter? You know, so is it doing it is the question. We can track so much now. We can track how long they listened. We can track what they skipped. You know, we can track a bunch of things, all ethically, all legally randomized. But, you know, as, as a large group, we sure. can do that. So number three, is it doing it? And then number four is how do you do it better? That's it. And I would say the home enthusiast podcast should follow these four questions. The big business podcasts could follow these four questions. Because what's fun is at the end of the day, you know, the downloads aren't going to matter. At the end of the day, the, the even the sponsorships and whatnot, everybody's going to have to get paid their part and it goes from there. But did the podcast accomplish what it is you were trying to do with the podcast? So the four questions again, what do you want the podcast to do? How do you know if the podcast is doing it? Is the podcast doing it? How do we do it better? I love that. The how do you do it better um, really strikes me too. And, you know, Kim and Ben and I are always talking about, okay, what segments are working? What's fun? What do we hear back from, you know, feedback from readers? What don't we hear much about? And so we kind of go, go from there to decide what we keep, what we cut, all that kind of stuff. How do you normally guide people on that last part, that figuring out what works? Well, a lot of times um, people ask the audience to do something here on the show. You're having them go for the newsletter, you know, sure. the current newsletter.com. And so what you check is, you know, episode one got downloaded 100 million times and 50 million people signed up for the newsletter. You know, episode two got downloaded 50 million times, but 30 million signed up for the newsletter. You actually did better in episode two than you did in episode one. So what did you do differently? And sometimes maybe you give a different domain name. You know, in the case of the guy with the phone number, I gave you an example. We just give an entirely different phone number. But what right. you do is you just put in a little tracker. You do that with social media, hashtags. You know, episode one has a hashtag specific, episode two has a hashtag specific, see what response they do. Specific web pages, specific URLs. You can get a URL now for like three or four bucks. It's a great tester to see. And, and you say that URL only on the podcast so that they have to listen to make that click. And it's, it's a way to tell. But what's interesting is let's say you do an hour long show and let's say you have them do something at the end of the show. 
And you listen, you know, you look at the stats and everybody only listened to about 80% of the show and then they hung up. Well, then the problem is not that you didn't give them a good offer. The problem was that nobody heard the offer. Nobody did what you wanted them to do. Now, maybe that shortened the show. Maybe that's put the offer at the beginning. But you can test these different things and go back and forth. And if you start out with that idea in the head of what do I want the podcast to do, then you immediately start building, and how can I track it? Yeah. So, Paul, do you have any, give us like the the greatest example of something that surprised you that you did with a client and you sat back and you went, whoa, I'm good. Can I give you the exact opposite? Sure. (laughs) Because I think this is a good example. Um, Before we had tracking for how long they can go through, um, we, uh, I did an episode of the podcast report and I told everybody on the podcast report, I said, um, hey, I got a very special message at the end. Stay to, through to the end. And the end of the message was, hey, guys, I'm doing a test. I want to see how long it takes someone to listen to the end. And so send me your email address. And I will PayPal you 500 bucks. Wow. Oh, my gosh. I can see how this is going to go. <laughs> no, nobody listened to the bucks? end. I eventually took it down because I started telling the story, but nobody <laughs> listened <laughs> to the end. And that's just the nature of the beast. And so you have to start designing shows so, so that you do that. Now, you know, from this learning, we have had people who, you know, they talk about, hey, at the end is a special offer. At the end, you're going to get an, an ability to do this, a chance to do this. And sometimes we've seen people actually just skip all the way to the end to look at that. But just having that little tracking point is absolutely amazing because then it becomes a, a, a statistics game. You know, if one out of every hundred does what you want them to do, then you can pay to get more people to listen. But if one out of but if nobody out of a hundred does what you want them to do, then you're just paying for more people to not do what you want them to do, you know, and not accomplish. Had one <laughs> client who um looked me straight in the eye and he told me with all the belief in the world that he's very big in, you know, Mozambique, which was about eighty percent of his downloads. And, you know, I'm like, No, you're not very big in Mozambique. You you just have you know, someone who's buying <laughs> downloads for you in Mozambique because they're yeah, really, right? really cheap, you know, and, and he wouldn't be convinced of that. But but there we go. But it, it all goes back to what do you want it to do? And and Kim, you do this. You do this well with with a lot of your, you know, your sponsors are around for a long time. So they don't just they don't just want to play the ads. They want to see the results. Correct. The, you know, Correct. you do coupon codes and you do these things. And that yes. is exactly part of nature. And that's why you've kept your clients for so long. Because it's not just, hey, I did X amount of downloads. These many people use the coupon code. These many people came in and took the special offer. That's where the stuff goes. So does this mean that if anybody's listening right now and they get to the end of Tech Refresh that you'll be able to give them a special offer, Paul? I, I think you're PayPaling them 500 bucks or, or, or maybe now that it's 2021, <laughs> let's, let's Bitcoin or Dogecoin so, or Bitcoin or something, or something like, like that. that. Yeah. Something, something like that. You know, good stuff. Great stuff. Thank Thanks. you for sharing that. I bet you a lot of people are going to benefit from, you know, from just some basics, but keeping that in mind when you are approaching a podcasting platform. Well, you got Anchor now. You can, anybody can podcast now. That's true. You can download the app, get to work. But, you know, so many podcasts on Anchor are, you know, tap microphone. Is this working? Is this working? Is this working? <laughs> you know, so we've got now hundreds of thousands of podcasts that are somebody going, is this working? Is this working? <laughs> Nobody ever asks that first question. And this is just as true for the local PTA podcast as it is for anybody else. So take those questions, do good with them. We're going to switch gears right now. Thank you, Paul. We're going to switch gears and we're going to play a new game. This is a brand new game. America's favorite radio game show sensation, brand new or not true, is heading back only to the Kim Commando show, which, by the way, you can download on Apple. You can subscribe to on Apple and you can get it on your Android. You can also get it over at GetKim.com. Once again, that address is GetKim.com because here on Tech Refresh, we like to keep things new and innovative. So I came up with a brand new game show for you that we're going to play here on Tech Refresh week after week. You can challenge yourself. You can challenge your friends. And you have to wear your thinking cap because it's difficult. It's hard. And it's something that I'm calling You Choose the Fake News. You Choose the Fake News. Paul, I'm so happy that you have your cap on because you're going to need it. So here's here's how we play along. Two stories are real. Two stories are real, and one is fake. Two are real, one is fake. So I'm going to read these stories, and it's up to you at the end to tell me which of the three stories in tech is fake. Okay? 
because we're all familiar with fake news. We've seen it. So now it's time to play You Choose the Fake News. You ready for story number one? Yes. Okay. Let's go. OnlyFans wants to be known for something other than sex. So the app has about 130 million users who basically go to OnlyFans for porn, right? Uh, But now they want to change their way. So they launched a new suitable for work app that allows people to share nude free content about things like fitness and cooking and wellness. So there are clips from chefs and Pilates instructors and podcasts, as well as uh, meditation videos and how to make cocktails. Now, one of the comments that I saw in this news story said, what sort of man would sign up and pay for clothed pictures of pretty women? (laughs) That's story number one. News number two. Is this the end of calling in sick at work? There's a brand new AI tool that bosses see if employees are really ill by remotely checking their vital signs on a smartphone. So here's what happened. You open the app on your device. You look into the camera for up to 45 seconds so that the AI can get a video of your face. Now, according to the company, their product suits the thousands of employees who are working remotely because of the pandemic, and they can't go to the office or even be checked for physical ailments. The company's CEO says, there are places that don't even have a sewer system, but everyone has a smartphone. Story number three, Tesla blames user error for car sealing off windows and suffocating the owner. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration said in public documents that since 2018 it has identified 11 crashes involving a Tesla with autopilot. I engaged striking at least one vehicle on a first responder site. So now comes this news. A Tesla owner died when the windows went up. He couldn't open the car doors and he suffocated, claiming that the brand was faultless If the drivers were not fully engaged, Tesla CEO Elon Musk blamed the user. That's right. He says user error. Unfortunately, it's a rare and preventable tragedy, he said, adding that it's up to users to make sure that their Teslas are updated and they do not engage in dangerous activities. And Elon Musk still argues that the autopilot and the Tesla is 10 times safer than the average vehicle. So we have three news stories. One's about OnlyFans that they're trying to get out of the sex business. Two is the AI that's going to tell you whether or not your employee is sick when they're working remotely. And the third one is the Tesla accident user error. So who wants to go first? I want to hear from Allie. Oh, I could see all these being real. Only fans. I think that they would be remiss not to try to get more money from people who don't want actual OnlyFans content. So I'm going to say that that is real. The AI tool. Ugh. Okay, first of all, can you imagine people actually downloading this and using it and not... uh, Man, this seems like a HIPAA situation waiting to happen, yet I could see it. Uh, Tesla. Now, that quote you read, that was from Elon? I think if it was... Actually, Elon, it would just be like a tweet that said, LOL. Um, that's, that's more his vibe on the internet. So or I'm going to say that the Tesla's... Yeah, exactly. Here, I'll, I'll send you some money, man. Sorry. Or to his family, I guess. I'm going to say that the Tesla suffocation is the fake news. Okay. What do you think, Paul? Well... I'm I'm definitely with Ali on the whole OnlyFans thing. You know, you know, once once somebody starts making money on the internet, they try to make it a thousand different ways. So, I think that one just makes sense logically. Um, the the app, Ali, I was with where you were thinking who would download that, but I think probably they would mask that as a if you're going to call in sick, you have to use this app kind of situation. You know, so I think yeah. I would do that. The the Tesla story as described, has such a public relations nightmare uh, scenario written around it that uh, I'm going to go false on that one. I I, I think, you know, Elon says some wacky things, but Elon's very strategic in his wackiness. And so I'm going to go with that one is is more, um, I'm going to go with that one being the false one. Final answer? Final answer. Number three, fake news. And the answer is the fake news the Tesla car. You guys won. There we go. <laughs> Terrifying that that app exists, but you know, yay, we won. So yay for us. Right? It, it was yeah. pretty close. Yay for us, bad two. for mankind. Yeah.
Well, the OnlyFans, they say, you're right, that this is where they're going to have their next revenue potential. And but that I thought that was a funny quote. Like, why would anybody want to see pictures of pretty women if they have clothes on? Why would though some things on the Internet just, you know, they don't always make sense. All right. Coming up next, Allie's got some things that she saw on the Internet that mm, are what? How would you describe them, Al? Weird. And Paul, you have something, too. You're going to share with us. That's Oh, yeah. Weird as well. And also we're going to talk about what's trending on commando.com. We have our listener email coming up and, of course, much more. So stay right where you are. Let me tell you about a revolutionary new mobile voicemail app. If you've got a business, your voicemail is probably filled with messages from customers. Often the messages don't contain all the details you need. But what if you were able to get visual information from your callers? That's something you can't do with a traditional audio voicemail box but you can with Fillmore Productions Video Voicemail. With Fillmore Productions Video Voicemail, callers receive a link to download the mobile app. There they can view important details about your business, watch videos about what you have to offer, and then leave you a video message. Actors and musicians can showcase what they do, and callers to medical practices or repair shops can report their issues visually. There are so many things that video voicemail can do for a business that makes audio voicemail a thing of the past. Discover what video voicemail can do for your business. Visit GetVideoVoicemail.com. That's GetVideoVoicemail.com. That's GetVideoVoicemail.com. This portion of Tech Refresh has been brought to you by TheCurrentNewsletter.com. Sign up now while you're thinking about it. Tech news and tips that you can use, no ads, absolutely free. Sign up now at TheCurrentNewsletter.com. All right. There's a lot of weird crap on the internet. So how do you just identify like <laughs> the one thing that you saw, Allie? Well, you're right. There's so much choice. Unfortunately, I have to narrow it down to one. We spend a lot of time looking for news to cover on this podcast, on commander.com, everywhere. Now, this has been the year of sports trading cards. Uh, a Honus Wagner baseball card just sold for $6.6 million. I don't know if you saw this. It shattered I don't know the who Honus records. Wagner is. <laughs> Well, he played for, I think he played for Pittsburgh in the 1900s. And actually the funniest part of this card, it's from 1909. But if you look at it, I swear it looks like it's from 1809, like Google Honus Wagner card. And it, it looks like I a thought Honus Wagner was, uh, but, uh, wasn't he on the Simpsons? <laughs> close. <laughs> close. <laughs> <laughs> you were close. You're not a sports guy. We know that. But that was not the auction I really cared about this week. Uh, it was actually for a single slice of Princess Diana's wedding cake. If you are thinking, wasn't that a really long time ago? It was. Uh, it was 40 years ago. So how much do you two think somebody <laughs> paid for a 40-year-old Was it preserved? Piece of cake? Uh, in some way, it must have been. Um I mean, it was still a slice after well, all you these know, years. Well, you know, there was the whole divorce thing, the whole Camilla, um, you know, sure. the dance. Um, she did die in that tragic accident. You know, and The Crown is coming out with the fifth season in the beginning part of next year. So because of all that, I would say $10,000. What do you think, Paul? You know, for the right nut job, uh, ten million. You know, <laughs> I think this kind of That's thing is true. all about the right nut jobs. But um, you know, probably I, I don't. I think it would go higher. You know, maybe a twenty. You know, twenty twenty five k kind of thing. Depends how many slices there are. Did somebody do this forty years ago, and they think they were going to sell one every year? Is it vanilla, you know? chocolate, strawberry? Yeah, exactly. There's some exotic <laughs> fruit in there from some you know island in the Bahamas or something. You know, I could see Die doing that. All right. I think you two are thinking about maybe like an NFT of some cake, which would have gone for that much money. 2500 oh, bucks. So we could probably all afford our own slice of Princess Diet cake. Maybe we should go for it. Either that or we could have bought Steve Jobs' bomber jacket from the 80s. You know, I just checked that one. It's It was up to like 3500 really? at this point. Yeah. I mean, my real question from this cake, though, is what do you think the person who bought it is going to do with it? Like just set it out on the table. I have, maybe you know what? Maybe it should have like its own Instagram account. So every day it's like a different shot of the cake. Oh, yes. it travels around. It's like a little yeah, like yes. a site sponsors the whole nine yards. <laughs> this month's I'm sponsorship of the Princess Guy <laughs> Cake brought to you by. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, what's your weird news? Spotify is becoming really, really interesting. Um, a- Apple has made a lot of mistakes this year and alienated a lot of people. And is Spotify? Really, podcasting is theirs to win. 
And one of the things that Spotify does that's really interesting is, uh, you know, the the playlists. Oh, yeah, the they're, influencers. You know what? And, they are great. These playlists, I love yeah, them. Yeah, you, you know, and it's it's the new American Top Forty. You know, it's the new Casey Kasem, and um, so monitoring those really heavily. Well, <laughs> found a a playlist called Weird Spotify. And uh, Weird Spotify is a Twitter account, so you can go to twitter.com slash Weird Spotify, and it is a number of the absolute craziest playlists you've ever seen. Um, probably Princess Dye's Cake is probably in there somewhere. But We should um, make one. You know what? Yeah. We should make one. Honest to gosh. A, a Princess Dye wedding cake. I mean, it would have, like, hits from that era, you know. Like, Absolutely. You know, these, these boots are made for walking, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's so many places I could go that would be dangerous and probably get me yes. canceled. So I will not. But um, the 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 playlist that I thought was interesting, and my my uh, daughter pointed this out to me, is is POV. You're a middle aged man who wants to be hip and cool. So if you're a uh, <laughs> middle aged man who wants to be hip and cool, and um, you know you're heading out to Spotify, uh, Twitter.com forward slash Weird Spotify. A playlist for this show that could be interesting. Well, I, like I want to know what's oh, in the POV for the guy that's middle-aged and wants to be cool. What kind uh, of songs are on it? I don't know. I'm not cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Paul. You could that's be true. Cool that's that's that true. I've been too busy that, preparing uh, for the playlist. show. Now, you looked at that playlist, and there, <laughs> would, there was a playlist about raviolis or something, Al? Yeah, one of the funniest jokes they do in those is the title will be something like, you know, ravioli, and then all of the song titles kind of tell a little story. And so this one was like, Mamma Mia. Um, <laughs> ravioli, I want some for dinner or something like that, where, you know, it uses all the song titles to tell you these really silly little stories. They're, they're pretty funny. You should definitely check out that uh, Twitter account. So we should come up with a Spotify tech refresh playlist. I think that would be it. fun. We should do that. It would be fun. We could all contribute. Yeah, like get the audience to contribute. Yeah. Top listeners. Yeah. So if you want to send us a, uh, a song, you have to listen to the end. Oh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <For> the... <laughs> you could just send us your request over at podcasts at commando.com, which, by the way, we all read. So when you send us an email, I don't want you to think that it goes into this, this black hole. It doesn't. We actually read every single email that you send. And again, that's at podcasts at commando.com. All right. Stay right where you are, because coming back, we're going to be talking about our listener email. Allie's going to tell us what's trending on commando.com, and there's going to be more laughs that you don't want to miss. Let me tell you about a revolutionary new mobile voicemail app. If you've got a business, your voicemail is probably filled with messages from customers. Often the messages don't contain all the details you need. But what if you were able to get visual information from your callers? That's something you can't do with a traditional audio voicemail box but you can with Fillmore Productions Video Voicemail. With Fillmore Productions Video Voicemail, callers receive a link to download the mobile app. There they can view important details about your business, watch videos about what you have to offer, and then leave you a video message. Actors and musicians can showcase what they do, and callers to medical practices or repair shops can report their issues visually. There are so many things that video voicemail can do for a business that makes audio voicemail a thing of the past. Discover what video voicemail can do for your business. Visit GetVideoVoicemail.com. That's GetVideoVoicemail.com. That's GetVideoVoicemail.com. We need like a sounder here that says, a letter from our listener mail. Okay, maybe I ought not to sing. Uh, maybe we should actually find that sounder someplace. But we do read every single email that you send us. And again, that address is podcasts at commando.com. So, Allie, we got one about a smart bed, a smart ring, a wearable, a trackable. What? Yep, you're hitting all the points. So our friend Delisle emailed. He listened to Ben's review about the Aura Ring, which, Paul, we were talking about this. You actually have one, I too. love my Aura they, Ring. He's wearing it right now. They track your sleep in all kinds of different ways. Delisle said in 2019, he bought a new sleep number bed. He said it tracks all the same things that the ring does. It's got something called a sleep IQ in it. It's got all the sleep tracking broken down by various categories, full of information. He loves it. I wanted to get a take from you two. Would you want a bed that tracked all that? Or do you like being able to turn off the tracking when you're done with it? Well, you know, I've been using the new iOS 15. It has this thing called sleep focus and all this other stuff. And so I've actually been 
saying like how many hours of sleep am I getting? Because I don't, I can't sleep with any, I don't even sleep with a pillow. So I don't think I'd be good with a tracker. And I, know, I, <laughs> I you're looking at me like, well, you both looked at me when I said, I don't even sleep with a pillow. What was that what? face? Those faces you just gave me. <laughs> you you got to try it. It's actually kind of nice. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, I'm Russian. I'm there to sleep. I sleep. That's what I am. Um, yeah. On a concrete it, slab. So, but, but a I'm smart getting, concrete like, slab. Like, I'm in bed normally like eight hours and 25 minutes. That's my average. And I think, you know, that's all I need to know. But, oh, you have the ring on. I, I see it. You're sporting it. I, I'm obsessed with this thing. And, um, and one of the things that I'm obsessed about with is I want my data all the time. And one of the times I really want my data is when I'm on vacation. And I just got back from Hawaii, Big Island, nice. the, the Hilton Resort, had an absolute blast. You know, no, no white lotus scenes for me, but I did okay. <laughs> and uh, and what was interesting was, you know, part of seeing how effective a vacation is is what was my sleep quality there versus my sleep quality here. And you know, yes, I'm Alaska MVP and all that stuff, but I think I would have had to pay extra to bring a smart bed with me. And I'm not quite sure how Hilton would have done that. So this I can take wherever I go. Now in the world of COVID. Um, I don't go as many places as I used to, but the, uh, you know, having the bed at home, it, part of trackers, part of what makes them so cool is the fact that you can move them and take them. And, and when time is appropriate, take it off and not use it and not track certain things. So, mm. you know, um, it, it is really fascinating to see how you're doing. Now there's a whole world to explore of waking up in the morning and having the ring tell you how well you slept and then basing your day based on what the ring said. And not necessarily how you feel. Yeah, I was kind of wondering about that. So, like, if the ring comes to you and says, "Oh, Paul, you were taking it easy today because, dude, you did not sleep at all last <laughs> night. But meanwhile, you're like, hey, I feel pretty good. I mean, do you listen to your body not or you go, oh. I, I, you, you know, what's the truth? What does my family say versus, you know, how, do, how cool do I like to think I am? Um, I, I think I believe that. The, the ring reporting kind of just helps me realize what I've been thinking. It, it, it many times reflects where I've been going. If, if anything, it's been nice for me because sometimes I feel like I slept like crap. And I look at the numbers like, you know, you know, you got up three times less than you normally do, dude. Like, um, you know, enjoy the ride. So it's, it's been good for me, but I have not missed a day for about three years. And wow, um, that's it's, amazing. it's absolutely fascinating wow. to um, look at what's going on. And what did it say when you were in Hawaii? Well, the trip before this one um, was just Heidi and I, and it was funny because I got a report that said, you know, Paul, you're, you're sleeping a lot more and your heart rate's down and your stress level's down. And this one does your temperature as well, which is just interesting in the COVID age. And uh, I said, but your, um, your REM sleep has gone down significantly as well. And it said, by any chance, have you been drinking more alcohol than usual. And, uh, you know, as my bedroom was littered with, you know, those, those little umbrellas, you know, but it was a good fight to know when I drink, I don't sleep as well, you know, and that's a good piece of empirical data to have as I make a decision about what I do. I still drink, you know, but just not as much. And I do know how it affects my sleep and I, I think I'm better for it. And the bed wouldn't do that for me. So Ellie, are you tracking anything? No, I probably about a year ago, I lost my Fitbit and I felt so free that I didn't buy a new one. I'm one of those people that I can't pretend that the data doesn't affect me. And so if, you know, I'm struggling to fall asleep, I'm just thinking, oh man, my sleep's going to be so bad. That chart, how many hours <laughs> it's going to say. So yeah, it's hard for me to disconnect myself. So right now, no, I am not tracking anything and I am happy about it. Well, I took off my Apple watch because I was getting too obsessed with like mm -hmm. every data point that I could track. And, but I do notice that with my steps, I do keep track of my steps on this phone, and that's the way I do it. And I do look at things like asymmetry and all this other thing on your steps. And I'm like, yes, you know, <laughs> gosh, you know, I'm taking like three foot steps. I mean, you know, this is great, you know, but it gets to be a little much. So, so is it, Paul, so is it just the ring that you have on? Yeah. Well, well I have the Apple Watch as well, but in, in health, you can uh, override. So it gets the ring data first. Awesome. Then do you take your and, and so they don't they don't fight with each other. Do you take your ECG off of the phone at all? I mean off the watch? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, I had to take berries away. <laughs> you can get obsessed about it. You can <laughs> you, you know, you want to think of it as like the nice friend. You know, and, and it's interesting because they did with this aura ring, they did a test during the early days of COVID. They gave it to uh, you know, oh, hundreds and hundreds of first yeah. responders 
And then they gave it to hundreds and then hundreds and hundreds of us who were far away from it. You know, they were testing temperature derivatives and that kind of stuff during the day. And it was it was pretty creepy to get up every morning and, and um, you know, do the report. But, I, you know, did my bit for health. So did my bit for science. And, and it's been fascinating. This is small enough. You know, Fitbit for a while. Yeah. Try to sleep with my watch. But I usually end up, you know, banging it up against something and scratching something or that type of thing. The, the ring is small enough it. that you don't forget yeah. to think about it. Yeah. And you're right. There are some things that you ought not to be, you know, tracking Tracky. along the way. Although Aura Ring does give you that option as a tag, that is not, you know, something that I regularly tag because that does not belong in the cloud in any way, yeah, shape or say, form. Let's share that on social media. Way to go, Paul. Whoa, yes. yes. If, if Ali reports in a future week that Aura has been hacked, you know, it, it's only certain points of my health element. that, um, And they're a great company. I don't expect them to be hacked at all. But So, Al, uh, tell us what's trending over at Camaro.com. Oh, we've got a couple good ones. 10 things you should never buy on Amazon. This is a good list. I know because I came up with it. Uh, <laughs> there's some real good stuff there. One, I'll give you a spoiler. Trader Joe's products, they don't sell directly on Amazon. So if you get it, it's from some rando third-party seller and it's probably marked up. So go to the regular store. Or you don't want to buy Costco toilet paper on Amazon. Same exact thing. Yeah, you want to go to Costco. Otherwise, you're just going to be buying some marked up version of it. We've got a free check to tell if your iPhone was infected with malware. That one's really important. We'll show you how to use it, uh, all the steps to take there. And then one I know that every podcast listener needs, how to finally clean your gross earbuds because they are covered in crust and junk. And instead of just picking at them with your finger, <laughs> clean them the right way. We'll that show you how to do gross. it. gross. Okay. I'm sorry. It is gross, but it's necessary. Have you looked at your earbuds lately? I have, as a matter of fact, and it was pretty disgusting. And that's when we were talking, like, this is a great tip. We need to have this tip. Yeah. And then you also put something really cool on our Twitter account. Sure did. So if you are not following Kim on social media, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Um, username Kim Commando everywhere. And we posted a really funny picture. It was a still from a video. So Kim and Ben are there. Uh, Ben's reviewing a product. I don't know, probably a battery or something. And Kim is listening patiently. And Ben is holding his hands probably about a foot apart and, you know, they're facing each other. So we posted it and said, give us your best caption. My mind, of course, immediately went to some kind of, you know, I caught a fish kind of thing. Uh, my favorite version of that was from Keith. He said, you're not going to believe me, but I saw a fishing scam <laughs> this big. Uh, Matt, this one made me laugh just for sheer like absurdity alone. I had a watermelon here a minute ago. Yeah, I saw that when I was like, <laughs> Where did that come from? I mean, watermelon, not so. So, so anyway, so yes. And if you're ghosting me on social media, if you're ghosting us, stop already. Just go to like facebook.com slash Kim Commando. Instagram.com slash, guess what? Kim Commando. Twitter.com. I'm seeing a trend here. Kim Commando. I mean, this is, <laughs> yeah, I do see the trend. Hey, Paul, thanks for joining us. And how does somebody get your book and hire you and get $500 for listening to the end of your podcast. Oh, well, the books at Amazon, that is one of the places that you, uh, one of the things you should buy at Amazon, buying books at Amazon is always a good idea. So it's called How to Podcast. I have a podcast called, ready for this, The Podcast Report. And um, <laughs> that's a fun one. You can find that wherever you get your podcast. And the uh, the company is podcastpartnership.com. And you know, what's the best way to fix a broken iPod? Uh -oh. By using a podcast. Oh. Oh. Wah, wah, wah. Oh. oh, that was bad. <laughs> hey, Paul, thanks for joining us. Allie, always so stunning and amazing to have you with us. Don't forget to sign up for The Current Newsletter. Head over to thecurrentnewsletter.com. You're going to love it. No ads. Comes out twice a week, thecurrentnewsletter.com. And just a quick reminder to rate us, to review us, to follow us, and subscribe. Again, Tech Refresh in your favorite podcast player. Asante came to TurboTax after graduating from culinary school and landing a job in the hottest kitchen in town. My hands are full all day, every day. I love it. Asante, as your TurboTax expert, I'll make your moves count, guaranteeing 100% accurate filing and your maximum refund. Sound good? Yes, expert! Switch to Intuit TurboTax and make your moves count. See guarantee details at TurboTax.com guarantees. Experts only available with TurboTax Live.